The person you should really be talking to is William Travers. We've already met. There was one fatal flaw. He really did believe 100% in his clients. Well, in the past couple of years, we've had three guns turn up with the same cordware. Right, we may have a trace on the gun. We've got some tire tracks. Is that your car? Yes. The hybrid. To think a young girl came in here and was killed. She was lying there on that bed. 0207-946-006H. Called that a few times, including twice on the day she died. Do we know who this belongs to? We managed to get a name and address, but uh, you wouldn't go there, would you? Thank you. Do you know anything about um, Agadir? Agadir? Would you ask that? Why are you so surprised? Well, it's a Kestrel itself. Maybe they ask the same question. If that barrister of yours starts making a nuisance of himself, we will have to take a different view. Scrummy? Scrummy? Is that a word anybody actually uses anymore? Yeah. Well, I mean, really. I'll try not to wake you in the morning. I've got a lecture tomorrow, nine o'clock. Well, in that case, I will try and wake you in the morning. <laughs> Did you lock the door? Yeah. Done. It's okay. Bastards! wasn't your average burglary. They weren't interested in my TV or money. They went straight for my notes. My daughter lives there. So who was it? I don't know. I might have been followed. A couple of evenings ago, uh, after I saw Martin, I noticed this, this car. Lucy Wilson said she was being followed. Before she was killed? We've had further information from the police that may interest you. Oh? It turns out Lucy Wilson wasn't everything she seemed. She had a criminal record. Blackmail? Money with menaces. When she was 19, she cried rape at a party. She'd gone home with a rich boy and she tried to extort money from his parents. Six months suspended sentence. But you realize this strengthens the police case. How are you getting on with the CCTV? Must have watched about a hundred hours, but I don't even know what I'm looking for. You know when you find it. I'm going to see this guy Lucy was calling. Um, hmm. There's something I ought to mention. Hmm. I took a call from a police detective in Ipswich. A Detective Inspector Wenborn. What did he want? I'm not sure. He was asking questions about you. <laughs> what sort of questions? Very general ones, character, personality. In the end, I told him to go hang himself and hung up. Thank you. It's 
excuse me. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for my husband, Detective Inspector Mark Wimborn. Mark Wimborn, I'm his wife. Can I help? What? I work with your husband. I'm Nick Taylor. <laughs> um, I just want... That is, I was wondering if he was here. Well, he's not in yet, but you can come to the office. No. <laughs> it's silly, really. He wasn't home last night, and I just... needed... Are you all right? Of <laughs> course. Cool. Yeah, it's nothing. Oh, sweet baby. <laughs> Is it she? Claire, yeah. How old? Ten months. Well, you can wait here if you want, or I can tell him you were here. It's really not a problem. I don't want to get in the way. It really doesn't matter. I'll see him later. Have you called him? I left a message. Okay. I'm sure he'll get back. Oh, all right. <laughs> sure. Bye. For Jamil Khan. And you are? I'm sorry, my name is William Travers. I'm a lawyer. Is Jamil in some kind of trouble? No, 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 I don't think so, but um, is he in? No, he's in Africa. And you are? Um... I'm Tarek. Uh, I live with him. Right. Do you, do you think I could come in? Why? Because your friend rang a young woman called Lucy Wilson, and a few hours after that, she was found, um, well, she was found murdered. Thank you. I've never heard of Lucy Wilson, and I can't really help you. Jamil doesn't talk to me about his work. But he is a journalist, yeah? Yeah, freelance. At the moment, he's doing a job for a magazine, Citywide. And do you have any idea at all when he might be home? I'm sorry, no. It really could be any time. You must be in touch with him. A mobile email. Not where he's been. Ivory Coast, East Africa, middle of nowhere. Right. Well, if he does, um, if he does get in, in touch with you, could you ask him to, um, to contact me urgently? Yeah. And this, um, this story that he's covering in Africa, do you have any idea what it might be about? Oil. You ready? Yeah. Come on then, let's go. Oh, okay. well, by the way, your wife was here. When? About an hour ago, she was looking for you. Did you speak to her? Yeah, I said you weren't here. Oh, well, she had the baby with her, Claire. Just stay out of my business, Taylor. Stay away from my family. Today, we're going to read a book called Private Peaceful by Michael Walpurgo. It's a story about two brothers fighting in the First World War. Why'd they do that? Well, if you read the book, Simon, maybe you'll find out. This is a children's book. No, Darren, no. It's, a, it's about a, a man who gets sent to prison through no fault of his own. 
Oh, like me, yeah? Yeah, yeah, there you are then. <laughs> Mr Cooper, where's Alan? He's not here. Oh, I know, I can see that. Where is he? Oh, he couldn't make it today. Is he ill? No, he's busy. The governor thinks you're doing quite well. It says here that you're writing a book. What sort of book is that? Is it porn? No. No? Hmm. I'm a Dan Brown man myself. You ever read any Dan Brown, Taylor? No, I haven't. I've read all about you too, Alan. You're gonna be here for a while. Nine years, that's what the judge said. Maybe six with good behaviour. That still leaves three to go. How old are you now? Seventeen. Seventeen and nine months. The thing is, I need to know where you got the gun. You said you found it in a skip. <clears throat> Do you believe that, Taylor? No. Why didn't you just tell the truth, Alan? It would have gone a lot easier on you, wouldn't it? I mean, you had a good case. You'd been bullied, provoked, no previous. Keeping silent, that done you no good at all. OK, the thing is, I'm investigating a murder, and whoever supplied the bullet is the same person who supplied your gun. I want to know. I found it. Oh, dear, oh, dear, now you're making me very angry. Do you know who I am? Look at me, son. Do you know who I am? Hey. Do you know how much trouble is about to come your way? Oh, I don't know. You listen to me, you tell me what I want to know right now, or this is what's going to happen to you. You're nearly 18. Three months from now, you've got to go to adult prison, yeah? Do you know what's going to happen to you in there? Do you know what I can arrange? Pretty little boy like you won't last one week before someone has you. I can arrange the prison. I can arrange the wing. I know men gagging for a boy like you, Alan. Where do you think you're going, son? I say, back off! <laughs> Maybe it'll be a big, fat, black one. Imagine that, being raped by him night after night after night. He calls and you call. Oh, yeah, oh. you'll be his prison bitch. And when he gets tired of you, he'll lend you out. Maybe three or four of them at the same time. Imagine that, Alan. Gang rape. You think someone will help you? They won't, cos I'll see to that. Rambo! Back off! If I tell you, they'll kill me! If you don't, I will! Please! Give me the name! called the diner. It's about ten minutes away. I'm not reassigning you. Sir, I... Look, I know he's not the easiest man to get on with. D.I. Wemble makes no secret of the fact that he hates my gut, sir. Ah. Are we talking racism? No. So he's hurt your feelings? I can live with that. It's just his borderline psychotic approach to the job that I find more difficult. 
terrorizing teenagers and insulting OOPs, plus the fact he never tells me anything. He's been to London. Why? If I'm supposed to be part of this investigation, maybe I ought to know. Are you talking about Spall? Yes, sir. London? Yeah, Mr. Wemble may have a suspect. I don't know. But we do have a lead on the man who may have supplied the gun that killed him. Mr. Cripps? That's what they call him. And you think Mr. Cripps may lead you to the killer? Yes, sir. Well, that's good then, isn't it? That's progress. Detective Inspector Wenborn does not hate you, Tana. It's not as personal as that. He hates everybody. But the thing about him is, he's bloody effective. He gets results. You know, you're not the first junior officer to be sitting in that chair saying these things. What's wrong with him, sir? And where does it say in the rule book that you have to be nice? Speaking personally, I find you weak and disloyal coming here behind his back. But you get results, and I'll be prepared to overlook it. Do you see what I mean? Yes, sir. Good. Well, that's that, then. Don't look so worried. I won't tell him this discussion took place. I don't believe it. I mean, I just... I can't believe it. This is the evidence. Six months suspended sentence. When she was 19, she accused an art student of rape. She then tried to extort 20,000 pounds from his parents to cover it up. Oh, look. I know what it is you're saying, but that's not who she was. I mean, she seemed... so sweet. She wasn't sweet, Martin. She was professional. I don't suppose this helps me at all, does it? Now, as far as the police are concerned, it just confirms their belief that she went into that room with a prior intent. To blackmail me? Mm hmm Give me all the more reason to want to stop her. Yes. So... It's not all bad news, though. We did manage to find you on the CCTV. There was a camera on Edbourne Street showing the corner of the diner you visited. It takes one image every 60 seconds, so we were lucky it caught you. That's me there. Yeah. It took a while to find because there's a problem with the time. You told us that you didn't get back to the hotel till 8.40. This was taken at 8.17. And yet the diner is only a five-minute walk from the hotel. Did you go anywhere else on the way back? On the contrary, I hurried back. Well, it was still warm. So you're sure it was 8.40 when you got back? Yes, like I told you, I, I asked someone. Excuse me, have you got the time? 8.40. Thanks. Beastly night out there. Mm. The man in the lift, we've managed to find him. His name is John Lerner from Detroit. Well, that's good, isn't it? He can't help us. He vaguely remembers meeting you, but he was jet-lagged. He can't remember anything else. Have you heard any more from Kestrel? Uh, not a word. You're aware that they're being investigated by a journalist, a man named Jamil Khan. I've never heard the name before. It doesn't surprise me, though. It can hardly be an oil business. In the world, it hasn't been investigated at some time or other. They have secrets. Of course they do. That's how they work. Here he comes, Mr. Cripps. All right, let's take him. Oh, God! Ow! Fuck you, you know. What is this? What do you want? Are you Michael Banks? Yeah. And you know what we want. Oh, what have we got here, then? Just get your hands off that. That's mine. That's a lot of money to be keeping... Under the sink. Under the sink. What happened to your hand then, Michael? I got burnt. Industrial accident. Ugh. Can't be too helpful in your line of work. I make car components. <laughs> Since when? I'm unemployed. What did he's open then? Forgotten. Yeah? 
Your brain get burned in an industrial accident as well, then. Get lost. Madam. Madam. Mikey, what's going on? It's nothing. Get out of here. Hold on. Who are you? Pamela Stewart. I live upstairs. Pamela Stewart. Do you know each other? Get lost, Pam. Hey! Sit down! What are you, then? You're not brother and sister, not husband and wife. Just having it off now and then with Freddy Krueger over here, are you? Fuck off. Oh, Pamela Stewart, you haven't got a son called Alan Stewart, have you? Do you know about it? He's the one who grassed up pizza face. He'd never. No? How do you think we got here, then? Do you think we asked the tooth fairy? Alan told us you supplied the gun that he used to shoot Wayne Parker with. He didn't mention that you were polling his old deer. I never supplied him nothing. No? He just uh, crept downstairs while you were upstairs reading a book. I see, I know what you're going to say before you even say it. Hey, where are they, Mickey? OK, let's see. Hmm. This little piggy opens the front door, and this little piggy's the car. What's this one, then? Oh, locker, safety deposit box. It's too new. But these two little piggies are well used, aren't they? You've been going in and out of somewhere a lot. Did you notice those lock-ups downstairs, Taylor? Yeah. Yeah. Shall we go and have a look? Hello, Will. Gemma. Martin didn't tell me you were coming. I didn't tell Martin. Coming. 20 years. <laughs> I can understand why you kept away. What you did to Martin was unforgivable. I don't see it that way. How do you see it? We were all very young. He went out with Jane. She met me. Well, it might have been better if she hadn't. Well, then I wouldn't have gone out with Martin. Yeah, I thought you were very happy together. Yeah, we were for a time. What happened? I have cancer. Did you know that? He operated and it didn't work. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm worried about David. Oh, he's 15. He's boarding school. I don't want him to go back and live with his father. He can live with my sister, but he may not want to do that. You know why I'm here. Martin wouldn't have had it in him to kill anyone. I really can't tell you anything else. Please, Gemma. Let's walk outside. Gemma, why did you and Martin split up? Oh, they asked me just the same, the prosecution. They wanted to know if Martin had ever been unfaithful to me. <laughs> oh, I love that. Osmanthus. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid you've wasted your time coming here, Will. I've nothing to say about our marriage. It's private. The doctor's given me six months, so contempt of court doesn't exactly scare me. You can pull me into a courtroom. I'll still say nothing. Why? Because of David. 
Martin wanted things I couldn't give him, and so we divorced. But all of that is private. Do you blame me? No. No, I understand you completely. Dear Will, you know, it's funny, really. You, me, Jane, Martin. All at university together and then cut forward 20-something years and look at us now. You never can tell. You never can. Perhaps it's for the best. Guns are bad news right now, Michael. I reckon you could be looking at nine or ten years. Maybe more if we make you an accessory and charge you with conspiracy to murder. I don't supply anything. I'm a collector. A gun collector? <laughs> That's very unusual. What'd you do? Hang him over the fireplace? You know, we have evidence that directly implicates you in the murder of Philip Spall. Where's my solicitor? Maybe I can make this easier for you. I'm not actually interested in you. Maybe you are a collector, like you say. You could be an amiable eccentric with an interest in illegal weaponry. I could live with that, but somehow recently... One of your guns has gone astray and ended up putting a bullet through the head of an anti-hunt protester. Would you believe it, in Framlingham? Now, if you could tell me who got their hands on that gun, we might be able to find a way around the other stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? Might be able to help each other. Why should I trust you? What have you got to lose? We got you by the balls as it is. I handed over a gun to someone just recently. It wasn't for him, he was getting it for someone he knew. Name? I didn't know anything about any murder. No, people buy guns off you so they can dress up like Clint Eastwood. What was his name? John Slater. Do you have an address? I don't know where he lives. He works for Blue Coast Freight. Down the docks. Do you have any idea what you've done? Mum. Oh, stop blubbing, for Christ's sakes. He knows it was you who crossed him up. Did you tell him? No, love. The police told him when they arrested him. Jesus Christ. I thought you had the good sense to keep your mouth shut. They threatened me. What do you think Mark will do when he gets hold of you, eh? <laughs> You'll rip your lungs out.
you're wrong. What if it turns out that he killed her? I can handle this. Did he kill her? No. Glad to see you. Why? Yes, of course. Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. Just feels like you've been away for ages. I haven't been away that long, have I? <sighs> well, y you're in London, and I just miss you. I missed you too. Come on. Let's go home. Mark, I've been so worried about you. You didn't come home last night. I don't know what happened at the shops. I swear you, I wasn't going to steal anything. Why would I want to do a thing like that? Well, maybe I don't give you enough money. You give me lots of money. Well, maybe try to tell me something then. And I would never want to embarrass you. Well, you came looking for me at work today. Only because I was worried about you. Why didn't you return my calls? Please, Mark. Don't be like this. You make me so scared sometimes. Scared? I don't like it when you're angry. Well, I get angry when my wife gets arrested at the local shopping centre and carted off by blue tops who are probably still laughing at me now. Still don't know what happened. I wasn't thinking we'll have to go to court. No, they're not prosecuting, cos I spoke to the manager and he's going to let it drop. <sighs> oh, God, Mark. You did it. I knew you'd do it for me. You're so... Get your hands off me! It's Claire's upstairs. Is she? Do you want me to get her? No, I don't. <sighs> I thought you might like to see her. Why would I want that? Do you want some dinner? Listen, stop your prattling. What's the matter with you? I don't know what you've become. Look at you, you're pathetic. <laughs> it's not just me. What? It's both of us. I feel like I don't know you anymore. Oh, you don't understand me, is it? It's the job. It's done all these horrible things to you. Dealing with these people all the time, all the dirt you have to live with day after day. It's changed you. You were never like this when we met. I don't know what you're talking about. We've got to do something about it, Mark. We can't just go on living like this. I don't have to listen to this shit. I'm going out. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let you. Get out of my way. No. <gasps> you want to know where I was last night? I was with someone else, a fit bird in London, and it was a lot better than you. Compilation of two hours in the life of London. CCTV. Mm. Yeah, I, I asked them to put it together. So here we go. Look, there's a man polluting the alleyway near the Avenue Hotel. Another man polluting the River Thames. And oh well, <laughs> where would we be without a good punch up at closing time? You know? And the, the list just goes on and on and on. And on. Do you think any of it's relevant? Well, it's a murder case, so you know, everything's potentially relevant, yeah. And look, see, any one of these people could have heard something. I mean, that, that woman there, there, she could have seen something. God, this is how you used to be. What? Oh, absorbed. <laughs> You've hardly said a word to me all evening. I'm sorry. No, don't be. I'm glad. I mean, looking at you now, it's as if Philip's Paul in the last two years never happened. Uh, Philip Spall is dead. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I read it in the papers. 
I'm surprised you never mentioned it. No, I didn't know. So when did you find out? Oh, um, a policeman came to see me in my office. They came to you? Yeah. Why would they do that? I just think they just wanted to know what kind of person he was, what kind of man he was. You know? So what did you tell them? I just told them everything I knew, which wasn't much. He was living here in Suffolk. I know. I know. <laughs> you don't think that's strange? I mean, you don't think he followed you? Uh, no. No. No, he lived over in Framling, almost miles away. Mm. No, I suppose it was just a coincidence, but I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think happened? Yeah, a man like him would have had a lot of enemies. You know, he, he was a killer and... and he was killed. You know, there's a... well, in a way, a certain justice to that. It's not your sort of justice. Stuart, what is it, eh? You rang the alarm. What is it you want? I don't, I don't know. <sighs> Two o'clock in the morning and you don't know. I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> hey, look, listen. You ring the bell and wake me up again, you'll go and govern this report. Do you understand? <laughs> Just shut up. Go back to sleep. <laughs> oh, it's true, that. Right, indeed. Hey, phone Mr. Cripps. Yeah, it wasn't so difficult. Not for you, I'm sure. And what about the man who bought the gun? Yeah, we've got him too. See the killer? He may have bought the gun for someone else. Hmm. Well, I've got the results of this um, sample of soil that you sent in. You took it from a car tire. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid it's not conclusive. Yeah, it's very similar to the soil at the bottom of the track where Philip's ball was killed, but it's contaminated. Parts of it are identical, and parts of it aren't. Same tyre, same tread, same soil. Well, you can persuade me. I'm easy. You'll have more trouble than a court. Court's a world of its own. Alice in Bleeding Wonderland. And although I hope you'll forgive me for mentioning it, it would have been nice to have had the correct paperwork. You know, make of the car, registration number, the owner, date that you took the sample. All right. This is useless without it. I got a phone call. Who from? He didn't say. Oh, was it like that? Oh, hello, is that Gonzalo's? Can you help me? He knew me. He knew about my drug conviction. He said he'd give me 200 quid through the door as a down payment. And then he'd give me the rest when he picked up the gun. OK, and you agreed? I needed the money. Did you give him your address? What? Or did he know it already? He knew where I lived. OK, so, you got the gun off Michael Banks, but you had to hand it over. Where did that happen? Felix O'Dox. So you saw him? You must have seen what he looked like. No. That wasn't how it worked. He just put the money down, walked away. I put the gun down. He never came anywhere near me. How old was he? Was he black? Was he white? I don't know. It was pitch dark and it was raining. And he's wearing a hoodie. Mid-thirties, maybe older. Well, Bill. What did he say? He didn't say anything. I put the gun down and I took the money. OK, did he have a car? I didn't see one. Well, and that's it? You're trying to tell me that's how it worked, like something out of shell, like fucking homes? That's how it worked. Jamil. What? 
Something's happened. It's bad news. What? Class is cancelled. No lessons today. Why? What is it? What's wrong? I can't tell you. Of course you can. You know who I am. I've been coming here for months. Something happened. killed himself last night. Hung himself in his cell. Who was it? Stuart's dead. So you can go. What is happening to us? I don't feel in control anymore. I don't feel I understand anything. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to stay. We, we, we don't have to stay. We, we can go. Can we? Yes. Sir, I've just been going through the John Slater file and I found a little coincidence that might amuse you. What? Well, it's just that the solicitors that defended him during that case, he got nine months, happened a year ago. Well, they're a firm based here in Ipswich, Dean's Court Chambers. And? The barrister that defended Philip Spall also works there. Small world, eh? Thank you. This is all so horrible. I just want it to be over with. Don't worry. It will be over very soon. Any movement on Spore? I expect to make an arrest. You seem to have been very keen to let as many people as possible know that you'd left the hotel. No. If I place it in the case, can you see the computer now? I was sure I saw it. And round the corner, you can feel the breakdown. What breakdown? Tell me we're going to be all right. 